Hey calculus class, today we will be learning about topic 19, derivatives of inverse functions. First we're going to review inverse functions from Algebra 3-4 and Math Analysis. So let f be a one-to-one -one function with domain A and range B. Then its inverse function, f inverse, has domain B and range A and is defined by f inverse of y is equal to x if and only if f of x equals y for any y in b. Rules of inverse functions. <clears throat> First, f inverse of f of x equals x for every x in a. f of f inverse is equal to x for every x in b. And the domain of f inverse is the range of f. And the range of f inverse is the domain of f. So if you remember from 3, 4 and math analysis, basically inverse functions, you switch the x and the y in order to find the inverse function. And remember, do not mistake f inverse for an exponent. Um, it means f inverse of x does not mean 1 over f of x. Inverse functions and continuity. Theorem. If f is a 1 to 1 continuous function defined on an interval, then its inverse function is also continuous. All right, so we're going to do an investigation. Please pause the video and I want you to answer these four questions on your own first. All right, <clears throat> so for question one, you had to find the derivative of x cubed at the point 2 comma 8. So you should have gotten the derivative was 3x squared. And when you plug 2 in, you should get the slope of the tangent line to be 12. For part two, you had to find the inverse of x cubed. So you switch the x and the y and solve for y. So your f inverse is the cube root of x. Now you're going to find the derivative of f inverse at 8 comma 2. So cube root of x is the same thing as x to the 1 third. So when you find the x, the derivative, you're going to have 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds, which is the same thing as 1 over 3 times the cube root of x squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in 8, and I'm going to take the cube root of 8, which is 2. 2 squared is 4, so I get 1 12th. <clears throat> Now for part four, you had to look at the derivative of f inverse and compare it to the derivative of f. And I hope you noticed something, because the thing that you noticed is what I'm calling the big idea. And the big idea is that the derivative of the inverse function is the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function at the x value on the original function, or at the y value on the inverse function. And graphically, this means <clears throat> that when you have your original function and you have the slope of the tangent line at that point, then on the inverse function, the slope of the tangent line is the reciprocal of the slope of the tangent line on the original. All right, so inverse functions and differentiability. If f is a one-to-one -one differentiable function with inverse function g equal to the inverse and f prime of g of a does not equal zero, then the inverse function is differentiable at a and g prime of a, so the in derivative of the inverse, is equal to 1 over the derivative of the original f in terms of g of a, where that g of a is the x value on the original curve. Alternatively, 
you can write it as the following. F inverse of A, the derivative of that, is equal to 1 over F inverse, or F, der the derivative of F of F inverse of A. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Find the derivative of the inverse of the given function. So <clears throat> the x value that I gave you is the x value on the inverse function, which means this is the y on f, and you need the x on f. So step one, find the x value on the original function. So I set the x value of the inverse equal to my function. Solve for x. <clears throat> so I get that x equals plus or minus 5. Step 2, find the derivative of the original function. So I find the derivative, which gives me 2x. Step 3, evaluate the derivative at the x value on the original function. So I'm taking the my derivative of f, which was 2x, and I'm plugging in 5 to get 10. Then I plug in negative 5 to get negative 10. Step 4, take the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function. So that means that the derivative of f inverse at the x value, 29 on the f inverse, is going to be 1 over 10 or negative 1 over 10. Your turn. So go ahead and find the derivative of this in inverse function. All right, let's see how we did. All right, this is the x value on the inverse, so therefore it's the y value on the original. So I set it e uh, equal to 9. Get one side equal to 0. And you're going to have to use synthetic division. So I set up my synthetic division. I'm going to try 2 as a possible rational 0. So doing synthetic division, you always start with a 0, add down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And this is a 0 because I get a remainder of 0. So now I can factor this cubic as x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 7. And I know that this factor will be 0 when x equals 2. And this factor, if I use the quadratic formula, I would get a discriminant that is less than 0. Therefore, um, it will be imaginary, and we do not worry about imaginary in calculus. So that means that the value I'm going to evaluate the derivative at is at 2. So now I can go ahead and find the derivative of my original function. Plug in 2 to get 15. Take the reciprocal to get 1 over 15 for the derivative of f inverse at 9. All right. Now on the AP test, you're going to see questions like this that will test you on the derivative of an inverse function. So suppose g of x is equal to f inverse and f of 3 equals 13 and f prime of 3 equals negative 9. Find g prime of 13. So we currently know that this gives us the derivative of the inverse. Well, we want to find g prime of 13. So that means that we need, g, need this g of 13. Well, remember that this is the x value on the original function at this y value. So that means that this y value of 13 is go has an x value of 3, which is given right here. So I need the derivative of f at 3, which we know right here is negative 9. So my derivative is negative 1 over 9. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about inverse functions and derivatives. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.